What is going on, Internet? Eric Vandal's back again with another uh, great episode from Beard Brand Alliance. Hope all's going well on the other side of the Internet. We're going to help our newbies. We're going to help our newbies grow their first beard. We're going to help you not make those mistakes that uh, you probably want to make. So let's watch. <laughs> Okie dokie, we got some uh, guys and girls in here who have been subscribed for a long period of time. You probably know a lot of this information, that's okay. Because every once in a while you gotta make a new video for the YouTube algorithm. I tell you the things in an updated way. It's November, so November, what do we do? We grow our beards out. No shave November, you guys know it. It is the best time to grow your beard out if you've never grown a beard out before. Why? Because there are charity organizations that you can grow your facial hair out and use that awareness that comes from growing a beard out to talk about things like uh, prostate awareness, uh, prostate cancer, uh, no shave November. There is Movember out there, you grow your mustache. These are great organizations that help uh, bring awareness to those who are struggling or could use some help. So get out there, grow your facial hair, do good for the world. All right, so the biggest mistake most people make when they grow their beard is they shave their beard. Ha, go figure. I think uh, a lot of guys will get impatient. They don't realize the speed at which a beard will grow. A beard grows at approximately a half an inch or about one centimeter every single month. So you see a beard like this that is, you know, what is that, an inch and a half? That's like three months of growth, baby. So a lot of guys, they get insecure about the growth of their beard. They see great beards like Greg Brzezinski, Carlos Costa, and uh, theirs isn't that within a couple weeks and they shave it off. Be patient. Give it at least 30 days to grow it. Now, every guy will grow at different rates. So some may grow a little bit faster. Some may grow a little slower. If you do want to speed up that growth, make sure you're in a well-balanced diet. Make sure you're exercising. And if you aren't eating a well-balanced diet, then you can supplement it with things like biotin, which doesn't make the beard come in thicker, but it does help it grow a little bit faster. I'll give you a heads up, it's gonna make these uh, fingernails grow a little bit quicker too. You can get that naturally in egg whites, dark leafy greens. So like any kind of vegetables you can get in there and then pair that together with nuts. Everybody loves nuts, nuts are great. And then, you know, like veggies and fruit, like eat real food, none of that processed stuff and uh, you're gonna be healthier and your beard's gonna look better. Now, if you're a few weeks into growing your beard and you're ready to make your first trim, uh, the biggest mistake I see a lot of guys make is where their neckline and their cheek line are. A lot of guys tend to take the, the cheek line down because they start this process of trying to get it even. So a little low here, a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here, until you're left with a chin strap. I want to recommend it. And uh, this year, it's not quite in style, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. And if you like it, then go ahead and grow it. But generally speaking, you want to be pretty close to the edge of your lip. Now, some guys actually grow pretty thick beards up here, and it's okay to leave it high as well. But I generally would not take it much further down than the tip of the lip, with the exceptions of guys who maybe have like extremely patchy cheeks right here, but they grow like really full, dense uh, under chin area. So trim to the style of the facial hair, how it grows in best. And then the neckline, uh, the biggest mi mistake guys make is they confuse what is their neck and what is their head. So remember, this is your head if you're going up like this. And if you're going backwards like that, neck. So you want to find that point where the neck meets the head. So a couple easy ways to remember where it is. You do an L shape at your sideburns and pretty much anything below your thumb, you're going to be trimming off. See, look at that, it's like perfect. And then anything above it, you keep. So look at this. This, my friends, is uh, about as good a neckline that I've ever had. And it's because I went to Bob the Barber at the Bar Beard Brand Barbershop. He did it for me. On the corners, you can probably go back a little bit if you want, uh, or you can just kind of take it down. That's, to me, that's a little more style. I want to let it go like all the way back here if possible. So ideally you kind of want to trim up the side here and you'll do that like using a, a second mirror is helpful. But again, if you're not confident with it, find a trusted barber who's going to take care of you and uh, then you don't have to worry about mirrors and stuff like that. Now another mistake guys make is kind of going back to what I talked about earlier and it's comparing your beard to others. And what happens is this takes you down a kind of a rabbit hole of 
feeling insecure about who you are. And rather than embracing your best features, like for instance, my best features are the mustache, kind of like this front chin area, a little bit along here, but I have pretty sparse kind of like this area. It gets a little patchy and it, it will get a little wispy. And then for me, as my beard grows longer, the cheeks will hit terminal length pretty short. So this will kind of hit terminal length here and then the beard will continue to grow longer. But then I just have kind of like these, these wispy disconnected cheeks that don't really blend in nicely with the longer beard. So what I try to do is find a beard length that works well for me. I found that kind of like the six month uh, to three month is about the best range for me in terms of how long it'll take to grow the beard. So a three month beard, six month beard, that's my own best range. And then focusing on a mustache, so making sure that my mustache comes in full will help draw attention to the mustache rather than, you know, people drawing their attention to kind of this thinner, sparser areas that I have on my beard. So don't compare your beard to others and don't go down that rabbit hole of just trying to buy like beard boosters or beard gains or beard, you know, like they're, they're essentially like the penis pills of 2020s. It's uh feasting on your insecurity of your facial hair, trying to get something to help it grow. Now, if you want a fuller, thicker beard, go back to eating healthy diet, exercise, lift weights, heavy weights, that's gonna help you. And then grow the best beard that you can do naturally, not trying to supplement. If you're still a young guy, and when I say young guy, I'm kind of talking about under your 30s, your beard is probably gonna to continue to get thicker as you age. So you can just kind of wait and let it to fill in. My beard as it is now didn't look like this when I was in my early 20s, late 20s. In fact, it didn't really start growing out until probably about 28 years old. So don't worry if you're a younger guy, your beards will come in later. Some guys have used uh, minoxidil or derma rollers on their beards and they have claimed anecdotal success to that. I think there's, you know, kind of a smattering of studies out there that validate these claims. You can go that direction, you can give it a test. Uh, me personally, I just think the better bet is to embrace your own facial hairstyle and look for people who have similar growth patterns to you. There's guys like Johnny Depp, there's guys like James Franco, there's guys that simply just don't grow great facial hair, Keanu Reeves, but they do rock some facial hair. And they found that even a little bit of patchy beard kept short accentuates your face better than no beard at all. So don't be afraid to rock some kind of facial hair, even if it doesn't come in totally full and thick. Your beard is unique to yourself and it's something that adds character. Now let's talk about beard products. Uh, obviously beard brand, we've got some great beard products. I would recommend every single one of them, but what should you do? You know, everybody has a different budget. They have uh, different expectations for what they want. And I encourage you guys to kind of understand what you're looking for in a beard care product and then go with the right product. We have Sylvester who will text you one-on-one uh, -on -one and kind of give you advice on what you're looking for. For instance, uh, a balm versus a oil. Now balms can be for styling, like we have a styling balm, which is more about getting the hair tamed. Or we have a utility balm, which is a conditioning balm, which you can use on your beard, on your face, on your tattoos, on your arms, on your hair. It's going to be a little bit thicker hold, that utility balm, compared to a beard oil. Now our beard oil is lightweight. Again, you can use it on your all over, wherever you want to use the oil, wherever you want to use a balm. Um, but it's a little bit lighter. It's not as heavy. And it doesn't even have like any kind of like hold ability to it, whereas the utility balm has just a little bit of wax in there that will give you just a smudge of control if that's what you're looking for. Go with a company who's willing to give you a return or an exchange if you get a product and it doesn't perform the way that you want it. So like a beard brand, we're always happy to exchange them. If you don't like the fragrance, we exchange the fragrance. If you don't like uh, the way the product performs, we'll exchange it for a different product or we'll get you your money back. There isn't a, an inherent this is the best one. Uh, there is only this is the best one for you. So, and uh, don't be afraid to try things. Don't, especially don't be afraid to try things with companies that are willing to exchange or, or give you your money back because there's no risk in that. Now let's talk about the tools. Look at this. Ooh, beautiful. I can just say I've got a little bit of a comb addiction. I personally love cellulose acetate combs. I feel like they glide through your, your beard great. They're going to... Uh, 
be envi more environmentally friendly. You can toss this in, they're decomposable. And uh, they look really cool. Like you just can't get this kind of style from uh, wood or a metal. And then the extruded plastics, uh, which come into a mold, they leave like this little hairline um, piece of plastic from where the mold met and uh, it comes apart to, to drop the comb. Well, that little hairline can cause uh, micro, you know, destruction to your beard when you comb it. So a comb that is hand cut is going to be better. And, and you can get a hand cut metal comb, a hand cut wood comb, a hand cut so it's acetate comb. So there's a lot of different ways of giving it. And it's like everything else. You go with what you like. A boar's bristle brush is also great because this will just like really lay down the hairs in an even way. It kind of gives like a nice separation of the hairs and it helps your hairs look a little bit fuller uh, in my opinion, just a little more managed, a little more tamed. Uh, so grabbing a boar's bristle brush. And then there's also a round brush when if you have a longer beard, you can use it as a styling tool. So if you're thinking of growing a longer beard, I would lean you towards like a round boar's bristle brush than uh, the smaller ones. Other tools that you want to consider are going to be scissors. I like scissors to just kind of get like the flyaways. I feel like I have a little more control. It allows me to grow like a little bit bigger beard, tame it up. Uh, you guys know we've done a lot of videos with Brio. They haven't sponsored this one, but I use the Brio uh, to trim up my neckline. And every every once in a while, I'll use it to keep my beard short. But I tend to be more of a scissors guy on my beard than uh, trimming. And we've done plenty of videos on those if you want to watch that. Speaking of a lot of videos, we've produced over a thousand videos on both of our channels, Beard Brand Alliance and the Beard Brand Channel. The Beard Brand Channel focuses primarily on barbershop experiences which is great. Find a video of a client that looks similar to you with a cut that you like. Take that into your barber and show them the cut so they'll have like a real accurate representation for what you should be growing. We want to inform you and educate you, but to a certain degree, growing a beard is that experimentation. Have fun with it. Play around with it. Don't be afraid to try new styles. Don't be afraid to try a mustache. Don't be afraid to try sideburn. Having a beard is a lot of fun. It's a style accessory to you. Just like your head hair, you can try different hairstyles and grow it out. Uh, you can do the same with your beard. So uh, don't be married to something and just think just because I do it this one time, this is the way it's going to be. And for those who want to know uh, my own style, I got a cut from Bob. That video is going to be over on the Beard Brand channel. The back flow is still going, so I've grown this out from kind of like a mohawk, and it's now kind of transitioning into a mullet. And I think I'm going to grow kind of like a uh, my my goal is the the Zach Morris Saved by the Bell kind of like '90s approach with a a mullet tied to it. So that's kind of what I'm going for now. Hope all is going well on the other side of the internet. I appreciate you guys hanging around here. As always, cheers. Keep on growing. For years and years and years, men were like, hey, you can't do that. You can do that. It's okay to spend some time on your grooming. And if grooming helps you to feel better, helps you to look better, I'm all for it. That's what's important.